So today I want to give you a talk about um, pears and how they fit in evolution. All right, so we know what pears are. Pears are kind of like apples, grow on trees, tasty. And evolution, we all pretty much are guessing know what evolution is. Basically, it's strong to survive. If people mutate and have something that helps them, like if a person mutated and had like really bulky arms, and that, that helped them in their situation, then they would reproduce more. And that, that they would the, they would mutate. Sorry. All right, so we'll start with how the pear evolved into the banana. Take your headphone out. Excuse me. <laughs> All right, so pears, by mutation, started to reproduce. The pears with mutation to grow longer started to reproduce, like so. And soon they became bananas. But the thing is, the white-tailed deer protect the pears because they eat the pears and they don't like the bananas. So the nutritional value of bananas is better because they're squishier than pears. So well, I'll let me show you, demonstrate how the genes transmute us. So we have the A tripled, the A gene tripled, and the R gene turned into an N, and the P gene did this. So it's like P, and then it's also like B. So it became banana. All right, so we all know that, you know, monkeys came from the primordial ooze, you know, climbing out of the water, and by eating the super pears, which is what bananas should be called, they turned into Neanderthals. Now, in evolution, this is what we know as the missing link. How did this turn into us? And I postulate that through the process of PCR amplification, which is placebo critical response, which is their sex, they think, they think the bananas are sexy, so they become more like the bananas, they became longer, or banana-like, so they're yellow and they're sexy and they're squishy inside. <laughs> and through eating bananas in a process known as digestive genome induction, they, the esophagus, transmuted the genes to their spine, which then went to their brain, and they reproduced more banana-like. Now, why are pears still in existence? And I mentioned this beforehand. Celine, because run office, please. The white-tailed deer love pears. They protect, they've been protecting their pear orchards for years, millennia, because they like pears, but they don't like bananas, because white-tailed deers are not about slim and sexy bananas. So, now the only, the only thing you need to worry about is not eating pears, because eating pears leads to a disorder called hepatitis P, where you have, and this is most frequent in middle-aged women, you have a woman who is, fine, and then when you get to her hips, they get wide loads. <laughs> this is why you don't eat pears, because you get, this is called hepatitis P. And that, uh, that's um, through an anti-bananification process, because they're not eating enough ban bananas to maintain their <laughs> yellow and slim and sexiness. Now, the, aside from that, you need to watch out for pomegranates. The South Korean government decided to genetically modify pears to make them shorter and squattier so that they could take over the rest of the world by feeding pomegranates to the rest of the world. This is bad. Do not eat pomegranates. Pom... Whatever. No. Do not eat pomegranates. They will make you short and squatty and, and pink. You don't want that either. The future for humans. Continue to eat bananas and soon you should become more banana-like until eventually we are all bananas. And so, so darn sexy. Thank you. <laughs>